my name's Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. A little bit different uh, format to this week's video. I'm up in Canada, currently fishing right now, so uh, what you're going to be watching is a podcast I did with Lola and Jordan Johnson, two lovely people up in northern Wisconsin that have a podcast called Tackle and Tacos. It is so much fun talking to these guys. I've done it once before and I will leave a link for that down below. They are bass fishermen for the most part, but love getting into muskies. They are friends with uh, Steve Jonasy, who is a well-known muskie guy down in Iowa, and they've done a podcast with him as well. So um, if you're not into the bass stuff, they do have a couple of muskie things going on with this podcast. Awesome people, super fun uh, talking to them, and hopefully it's just as fun to listen to. So we're gonna go into that right now. Uh, let's get to the dude. Let's get to the man. Let's uh, let's dive into how to catch muskies. So with no further ado, and then we can take our own faces off the entire screen because it just feels weird. Uh, Mr. Brian Scaife. Yo! Hey. <laughs> what up, buddy? Oh, man. The, the start to your podcast is like the start to my videos. Just... <laughs> Just utter silliness, and I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have like an idea of where you want to go, and then life goes, nah. Nah, yeah. let's be, let's, let's just, just be do something ourselves. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how are you, sir? It's been a while since we had you on. Doing really well. Um, yeah. Musky fishing's been pretty good, and good. videos have been easy enough to come by, which is not always sure easy to do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I was down in Iowa and we just absolutely crushed them. We, we boated 15 fish in three Jeez. days. Wow. Five That's a day. Amazing. That's incredible. Heck yeah. It dude. was so That's cool. Yeah. Um, I was in Indiana before that. Okay. Uh, and then for the Northern Wisconsin opener, uh, last weekend we got humbled a little bit, but, uh, okay. that's all right. We, we still you, came uh, away with the, with a fish, fish or two. So. Where'd you fish in Wisconsin? We went well, up Northern and we're Wisconsin, fishing, but... we, we were fishing the tributaries of, uh, Green Bay. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, and uh, yeah, it was the water was high. Uh, we okay. just had a bunch of rain, so that was not helping matters at all. And uh, so after two days of getting our butts kicked, we switched over to a little uh, reservoir on the Oconto uh, River and finally managed to to find a fish or two. So that okay. was pretty Good. cool. Yeah, what was yeah. the water clarity like after that rain? Was it muddy or was it? It wasn't. I was surprised. It was about the same as it usually is when, really? when hmm. water's running low. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I That's thought it was a... gonna blow it out. And... Yeah. That Green Bay area, man. They are. Um, what's that? What's that? What's that phrase? Embarrassment of riches or something? Mm -hmm. Like they have crazy smallmouth fishing, incredible walleye fishing, oh, yeah. incredible musky fishing. That whole area around there. I mean, the tributaries, Sturgeon Bay. Um, they got little backwater stuff that people probably haven't even fished. It's just so all over the place. I mean, it's, that's an awesome area to fish for sure. Uh, Hey, yeah. tell me about that. Tell me about that pike above your head. Oh, uh, so this pike was caught. So the picture like right behind me here, uh, uh -huh. is the place, uh, the place that we used to stay on blue Lake in, uh, Vermilion Bay, Ontario. So before we started fishing Eagle Lake, which is right there, uh, we were going sure, to this cool. little, uh, small, oh, yeah. Um, uh, small lakes that my grandpa used to go to and blue lake was the headwater which flowed into corner lake and indian lake but uh so blue lake is this super clear deep lake trout smallmouth type water mm -hmm. and the locals kind of stay away from it but the walleye fishing is amazing and mm -hmm. there's gigantic gigantic pike and that's a 46 and a half <sighs> that i had done yeah, that's a yeah. big boy for wow. sure. Dude, it's so funny. Like in the in the fishing world, uh pike are they I feel like they just don't get the respect that they deserve. And I know they can be kind of water wolves and snakes and they can be especially when you're bass fishing, like throwing a swim jig and they bite you off because they're so aggressive mm -hmm. and they swim mm -hmm. past the lure and whatever. But like, man, they can be so stinking fun too. And they can oh. get huge. I love pike. Yep. yep. No, it's funny because sometimes in the videos we'll take some heat uh because we're out there fishing for muskies. So yep. Even if a big pike, like an upper 30s or even a 40 incher, hits, there's almost this little bit of disappointment. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. It's, it's not it's a musky. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot better at at being like, hey, man, this is this is a trophy fish. Like this is a 41 or a 42 inch pike. Yeah. This is yep. about as this is like catching a 50 52 inch musky. Yeah. So um, you know, try to try to give them a little bit of love. And on top of that. The nice part about when we like when say when we go up to Eagle Lake and musky fish, our uh, we don't have to waste any time catching walleyes because we catch enough 
pike. And I mm. love, I think pike is Dude, the best eating fish. It could love be it. the best table fare out there. And everybody trips on it because of the Y bone. But if yep. you know how to get that out or you just do the spine fillet or whatever, like, dude, they taste awesome. So good. It is so good. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, usually that's what we'll do is we'll just, uh, we'll be chucking musky baits. And if somebody yeah. gets a 25, 26 inch pike, pop it over the head, throw it in the live well, and Perfect. away we go. We got yeah, dinner. Absolutely. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome, dude. I love that for sure. Um, so uh, before we get into the strategic stuff of the episode, and we're really honored, happy, excited to have you back on, man, and we thank you for taking the time to do it. Oh, absolutely. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, before we get into like how to catch muskies for summertime, whatever, and, and if you want to, you can get into, I'm not trying to lead you truly, but however you want to take it, you know how sometimes later in the summer, you know, you really shouldn't be targeting muskies, you know, as far as mm-hmm. like water temp and you know, delayed mortality and all that, wherever you want to go with it, we're, we're excited to have you talk. Um, but before we get into all that, break the people off with, uh, how they can find you, social media, your YouTube channel, website, all that kind of stuff real quick. Sure. Uh, YouTube is angling anarchy. Uh, just punch that in easy enough to find Instagram is angling underscore our anarchy, I believe all lowercase. Yeah. And then, uh, Facebook, same thing, just punch it into the search and, and you'll find it. And that's pretty much all I have. I really should get a website set up so I could uh, do merch and stuff, but yeah, I just haven't had time to, unfortunately. No, it's all, it's, that's like such a thing where like a website, it's like, oh, I need to get a website. And then it's like a week later, it's like, oh, I need to get a website. And then like nine months later, it's like, yeah. oh, I need to get a, it's so easy to not, mm-hmm. even though it's not that hard to set up and whatever, but, but yeah, yeah. I also, <clears throat> I love the name of your, of your, uh, brand angling anarchy oh, because thanks. they're, I mean, in general, there's that feeling of like when you get a fish on that, everything just kind of goes to poop, you know, but especially mm-hmm. a musky, uh, you know, something big, something that you're like, I always called musky scary fish, not just because they are scary, how big they get in their teeth and whatever. But when you get one on, you're like scared to God, like, please don't come off, you know, like that mm-hmm. that can happen. And so I think angling anarchy makes sense. Also, Side note, will you talk us through just real briefly, speaking of angling anarchy, that giant freaking megalodon, um, beautiful fish that you caught in that creek, small river area, whatever, speaking of anarchy, Mm -hmm. how it like came off and your homie scooped it as it was coming off. Can you give us like a three minute recap of that story? Because that fish is incredible. And that's like the epitome of anarchy. Absolutely. Uh, So that fish came in and hit right at the boat and right away... I knew it was a giant. Yeah. Um, so my buddy said, do you have it on free spool? I was like, no, it's right here. Let's yeah, get it in the net. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. And that's a lot of the comments are like, oh, that's not much of a fight for such a big fish or you should play it out. It's like the longer a muskie is in the water, the more chance it has to get off. So yeah. I am more than happy to have a two second fight scoop the fish because for musk for most musky anglers, it's about capturing the fish yeah. and, you know, maybe get in a measurement if it's a big one and a picture and get her back in the water. And the, the shorter fights, um, it's less stress on the fish, yeah, especially exactly. that time of year that that was a post spawn musky. But so yeah, the, the fish comes in hits and I'm, I'm just like, Hey man, get the net. Let's get this because she was just kind of doing these big, slow giant head shakes on, on the surface. And I'm like, she's right here. So he, so I was pushing it a little bit and you know, he's excited. It's, you know how it's, it's like you said, it's scary to be the net man. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the for sure. Feeling. Yeah, it's 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 like it's like an offensive lineman. You get no credit really, but until you mess something up and then it's like, right. you're the worst person alive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I saw the fish heading into the net. And I think what happened is he didn't have the bag of the net low enough. And as it's Mm. going in, the bait caught about a foot into the net. So now it can't, yeah, now, now it can't go in any further and it's just kind of stuck in the net, shaking around 40 pound plus fish. Probably it's tough to maneuver the net. So you you can see in the video, it shakes, shake, shake, and it kind of snaps. And that's when the fish is, is literally just sitting in the water and my friend Nathan is actually his parent and parents and him owned a flying camp in Canada. So he's oh, been awesome. guiding pike and muskies since he was nine years old, probably. Oh, wow. Okay. So he's netted tens of thousands of fish. Yeah. And in that moment, he just, he flipped the net over because he saw the fish starting to go down and the fish just 
basically swam right into it and he had it in the right place to pick it up and, and get it. And uh, it's, it's oh really gosh. funny because there's so many comments. I think on the, the short that I made for TikTok is at like 1.2 million views right now. Wow. There's, oh, and, and the more views you have on a video, the crappier the comments get. I mean, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. It just goes downhill so fast. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there's so many people like, oh, that was an illegal catch because you netted the fish. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure any what? warden you talk to would say that fish was legally hooked, brought to the net, things went sideways. And yeah, yeah I don't, it's nature. Yeah. 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 And I, oh I've, I've been trying to get a hold of That's one of the wardens here. Catch. Oh, I know. And, and I, I've, I really wanted to get one of the wardens to sit down with me so we could talk about it, but they denied my request for an interview. Yep. But anyway. Yeah, yeah I actually um, have a buddy who's a DNR officer, and I wanted him to be on the show. And he's like, dude, I really shouldn't. You know, whatever, I can get yeah. myself in trouble. Yeah, they just have to be careful. But Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, just so off the record, I got to find this guy. He's, he's a nice dude. I've talked to him before. And uh, just say, hey, man, watching that video, like, what's your take on it? Just yeah. so that I, I, like, I'm I won't assuming quote that, you. Yep. Right. Yeah, I mean, I know what the take is, but yeah. I, I just want to know for for my own knowledge, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that was it's like the net job heard around the musky world. There was I mean, a lot of people yeah. talking about save, that. Like, like, yeah, like 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 wreck the day, <laughs> then save the day, like two seconds yeah. later. And how like, big was that fish? Fifty three and a half. Yeah, fifty three and a half. But f- you're right, probably forty plus pounds. The thing's a Goliath. I didn't know it was mm-hmm. post spawn. I mean, that's crazy to think too. Yeah, she was probably uh, that was up in one of the Green Bay tributaries. So she was oh, coming. Was. Okay. I, I'm and she had some marks on her already. So I'm I'm pretty sure she'd already uh, mm. was probably heading back out. Could could have been in the middle of it. I don't. But usually when they're in the midst of it, they they don't hit. So yeah, true. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So um, what is that video called? Do you remember the title of it? Like if somebody wanted to find it. Oh God. Well, so if you bring up my YouTube channel, it's like the first video that you see. Okay. There so, you go. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome it's video called. because like it to me it just appeals to all my senses like, especially like as a kid who grew up musky fishing because it's like a a small body of water an absolutely giant fish the markings are just gorgeous like just a i mean everything you could want in a musky and then the video filming is super good the messed up net job to saving the day with the net job i mean it to me that's like the summary of your whole channel like it's honest it's real it's filmed well things didn't go perfect things did go well you know whatever but yeah that's just a that's just a dope video so Thank all you. right brian let's get down to the let's get down to the needy greedy as nacho all libre right. would say um you probably heard my little spiel in the intro and then i talked to you about it just through mm-hmm. text um I would assume like maybe what I feel when I musky fish sometimes is probably not that uncommon of a feeling, you know, the whole fish of 10,000 casts and all that. Um, when I'm bass fishing, you know, like if I'm, if I'm flipping a jig on a dock and it's not on that dock, well then in my head, I'm like, Oh, he will be on the next dock. And if it's not that dock, I'll go to the next dock. You know, like it, you, it's easy to keep your head in it. Musky fishing. It's really easy to, f- to make 400 casts in a day and be like, dude, I haven't seen a fish. I haven't had a follow what the F am I doing out here? Like, how do I do this? So, um, so for the summer, um, however you want to take it, give us some pointers, man. How do people catch musky? Okay. Well, so I'll start here. Um, I like to say that, uh, when I'm working, I work smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. When I'm musky fishing, you have to fish harder, not smarter because, okay. There's so many times that I'll, we'll, we'll be trying to break down the water for the day and maybe the wind is pushing the warmer water towards the shoreline. Well, it's like, okay, the fish should be over there. I, I read in a musky hunter magazine or I saw yeah. on musky hunter, the TV show. So you're trying to recall all these things that you may have read or seen before. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the fish that should be on the wind swept side of the rocks they're on the other side of the rocks. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. So I always tell people, you know, do whatever gives you confidence. Um, whether that's fishing the windswept shoreline. Great. If you find them there, fantastic. If you don't, okay, now you have to reboot and try something different. You talking about questioning yourself, deer hunting or musky fishing. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there, there are some things that I had thought about when you, you talked about, like somebody just maybe goes up to northern Wisconsin and mm-hmm. they're on a lake that they know has muskies. Um, 
and as, as long as we're in the period of the year where the water temps aren't over 80 degrees, so yeah. anybody, if you, if you don't know, that's sort of the demarcation line of stopping fishing for muskies is about uh, once that water, that surface temp hits 80 degrees. Yep. That's sort of the unspoken rule amongst muskie fishermen to kind of knock it off. Um, I've, you know, seen dudes, you, I've seen dudes confront dudes on the water. Like oh, yeah. there was a, there's a pretty good, uh, musky fishery in Illinois called uh, snake den hollow. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, Brian. Mm-mm. Um, I've caught some good muskies out of it and it's a good bass lake too. A lot of standing timber, clear water, deep weed edges. Uh, and I would go out there and catch muskies until the water got too high, um, temperature wise. And then we go out there and we just fish for bass or crappies. Awesome area. And one time my friend Kelly and I, we were out and, uh, I think he was throwing a swim jig and I can't remember what I was throwing, but somebody came over to us and we're like, Hey, are you guys musky fishing? And we're like, no. And they're like, oh, good. Cause you know, the water's like 82 degrees right now and they'll die and whatever. We're like, oh, absolutely. But it is sort of, and what is it? What is it that does it? Isn't it some sort of acid buildup thing or something in the hot water that they can't recover from or? So it could just be like lactic, lactic acid buildup, which you also yeah. get from fighting a fish for too long, which is why, well, like I said earlier, I like to capture the fish as soon as I can. I don't yeah. want the, the fight to be p- too prolonged. And hot water just exacerbates that they've done some studies and i i know people say like if you're fishing in the shallows and it's 82 degrees on the surface it's probably not that much cooler down at the bottom at six feet Mm. so if you've got a fish that's willing to eat and is active in that sort of water as long as you don't overhandle it it'll probably be okay but it's also probably not worth taking the chance at doing that so so yeah, 80 degrees, but I, I was, I'm, I'm going to say, um, probably the go-to lure of anybody that just wants to go and throw a lure and try to catch a muskie. Oh man. Medusa. There it is. The Medusa. I freaking love that word. <laughs> I had a couple hanging up here a while ago, but yeah, that is the, that is the jam, the Medusa. So, so this is a mid Medusa and oh, yeah, you know, for, back there. oh, there we go. For a lot of people, that is a, it's a large bait in the muskie world. This is this is a mid Medusa, so it's yeah, sort of yeah. a smallish to mid size. This is a a mini, so it's yeah. a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, but between these two baits, if there is one bait, if if I could only have one to fish, spring, summer, fall, winter, a mid Medusa, there because you can fish it shallow. You can go out to deep water and fish open water fish. You can there's these little weights. I don't know if you can see that little mm-hmm, weight yeah. right there. It's called yep. a deep threat weight, and it's it's just sort of a little pancake weight that has a a slit that goes over the hook hanger. You just take the hook and the split ring off, and you can add that weight to it. So that way you've got a bait that you can go up and fish a weed edge and just pop it along, keep it out of the weeds. If yep. you want to go out to deep water and get it a little bit deeper, throw a deep threat weight on you cast it out let it sink a little bit hop it back so as far as having a bait that is just absolutely universal and will, will work anytime anywhere a medusa a mid medusa is probably okay. the way to go um the, the the problem would be if if you're if you don't have a musky setup if you're trying to throw it like on a bass setup it's it's sure. a little bit heavy for it so yeah. um you definitely need a a little bit stouter setup for that but um, yeah, and and I guess to be more specific, so maybe starting this time of year, those fish are definitely post spawn. Once you get past sort of mid fifty degree water temps, uh, you're you're past that post spawn period. So you should have fish that are maybe relating to the spawning areas, which are shallow weedy bays. Sure, they're probably out on weed edges. So that that's that's where I start at. When we go to a lake um, and, and we've never been there before, it's like, all right, let's find some weed edges and just start working those. Yeah. Uh, if that doesn't work, sometimes we'll push in real tight because there'll be like an inside weed edge. Mm. Uh, so we'll start going up in there, kicking around. If that doesn't work, sometimes once those fish are post-spawn, they will push out into what we call open water. So off that kind of first break, away from the weeds, you know, if the weed edge is eight feet, maybe you'd be looking in that 12 to 15 foot range. Sure. And that's where it gets a little bit tougher because, and that's where you've, you kind of have to use your sonar and maybe find some schools of bait fish 
whether that be yeah. schools of, of bluegills or schools of ciscos, depending on the yep. lake that you're on. And, and it's a, it's really hard to do. I still, I've been musky fishing for a long time and I still have a hard time fishing open water. But if you can find those balls of bait and use that as your structure that you're casting to, um, that actually that's where a lot of fish are. And there a lot of the big fish are out there. Sure. Uh, a lot of times you, you can't get, or you don't see the big fish other than when they come to spawn ah. because those bigger fish are pelagic fish, which just means yep. they're, they're out in the open. Or, yep. 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 So, um, that's probably, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything, but are you, uh, uh Brian, I, I know we talked about this briefly last time mm -hmm. and I think I know the answer, but I can't remember. Are you a forward facing sonar guy? I don't have it. Okay. Um, I don't get my panties in a bunch about it. Like everybody seems to. On yeah, yeah. 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 People do get real. Like that's like, that's like saying like a, a racial slur or something. Like oh, it's yeah. just instantly offensive to some people, which is so weird to me. But uh, yeah. I just know like for me, like as a bass guy, um, sometimes I'll find schools of bait using forward facing sonar, you know, cause you mm -hmm. can see like the little movement It kind of looks like a cloud and then, yeah, you can always catch fish out of that bass or whatever else. But yeah. so I guess where I stand on it is I, I don't, much care for the guys that are just literally driving around and going, Oh, just, there's one cast, yeah. cast, cast. Okay. Yeah. On to the next one. Yep. I mean, the technology is there. It's legal. If you want to do that, fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to uh, lose sleep over it, but it's not for me. Okay. I've been on boats where we've got it and maybe we've got it pointed alongside the boat. So you can see maybe you had a deep follow. Mm -hmm. Yep. And at least that way, you know that you're moving fish that you're sort of in the right area. Mm -hmm. um, so for the guys that have it and just sort of have it on continuously, but but would be fishing the same way yeah. I would be fishing, just working a weed edge, but you're using it to maybe see how the fish are reacting. I mean, I, I think that's that's a, a cool way to use it, quite honestly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. One thing, too, that I, I say this all the time about forward-facing sonar, outside of even seeing fish on it, and that is – it's pretty fun, honestly. Although I, you know, in the bass fishing world, I don't like watching tournaments where it's a forward fi facing sonar tournament where they're just casting their heads are just down. Yeah. Looking, you know, they're just looking at their electronics. They're not looking at, like, you know what I'm saying? They're not like, mm -hmm. like recently, I can't remember who it was. I think it might've been Corey Johnston. He's a pro from Canada. Uh, he won a tournament and they said, Hey, did you catch that? Or did you win that tournament live scoping? And he's like, no, I, I won it fishing, which I thought was such a like almost sarcastic, but accurate statement you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um anywho uh but one neat thing about forward facing sonar is you know it's on the shaft of your trolling motor so as you're kind of panning around like and, and you're saying fishing inside outside weed edges the neat thing is you can see down 100 feet and so if you mm -hmm. lose contact with that weed edge you can kind of see it on your forward facing sonar so you can get yep. a little more specific with your casting even if you're not just you know seeing and targeting one fish you can kind of see your your environment a little bit more too you know and to so to, to go back one one technology I guess uh, side imaging for me imaging, was yeah. huge for working a weed edge that I didn't know because I could put myself a cast length away from the weeds and if yep. I started to see it coming out before I'm on top of it which is what would happen before right. I could start moving the boat out a little bit and so I I I guess, I guess that's that's as far as I've gotten technologically with yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, with sonar sure. is is side imaging but uh I I do have a couple of buddies with the the uh Garmin live scope yeah. and uh we were actually on Lake Koshkanon um super shallow fishing back for crappies and stuff like that and we had it on perspective mode so you're looking yeah, sideways. out and just you know cuz it was shallow water mm -hmm. and the amount the amount of fish that are between you and the shoreline when you're only like 20 feet out constantly for yeah. hundreds of yards is astounding. It's, it's I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it yeah. almost made me feel like, what are we doing? Like, why can't we catch yeah. anything? No, well, that's granted, the other thing probably, about it too. Yeah. You can drive yourself back crap crazy. Cause now all of a oh, sudden yeah. it's I like, I can see them. Yeah. And, they there. Won't, and you can't get them to bite and you can throw, you can wear out the boat trying to, you know, throw every lure you got, even at, like you said, like crappies and, they'll swim up at it and they'll swim back away and like dude, mm -hmm. yeah so it's i mean it's a tool it's a balance it can drive you crazy i totally get some of the hate for it but i also think it can be it can be a positive thing too so i don't know i was Absolutely. just wondering about the the bait ball oh, thing you're talking about for sure, so, for sorry sure about yeah that. all right yeah, keep oh going. no worries man um <clears throat> excuse me so as far as just having that one bait like i was saying a medusa is is amazing to have and actually yeah, another thing best. you can do and i forgot to grab it but 
um, you can actually, so this is a, a Lee Lures boiler maker, and I'll talk yeah. about those. Awesome but you letters. can actually take a little piece of wire, put a little six or eight uh, Colorado blade, and attach it to the front of the Medusa. Hmm. Uh, a lot of guys call it a bulldozer blade. Okay. Yeah. And not, now you can just cast and retrieve your Medusa like a, 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 a bucktail. Oh, so that's weird. Yeah. Y- you can really make these baits be cool very idea. versatile. Yeah. Very versatile. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so moving on to kind of my second choice, I guess, for okay. for just getting out there and catching muskie is just a small, single-bladed, this is a size 8. Um, so this you could actually get away with throwing on some some smaller gear. And yeah, this is a Lee Lures uh, boiler maker, a mini right. boiler maker. And it's yep. got that little wood wood uh, body on there that keeps it high exactly. in the water column. Yep. So I, I like fishing over weeds or fishing in a really shallow river or something like that. Yeah. Big but, shout out to Lee Lures. Where's that guy from? Uh, he's up in Matt, yeah, up in the Madison area. Madison, I thought, yeah. Madison area. Yeah. He's a yep. man. That guy kills it. And I have a, I have a buddy, um, that I used to work with at Shields, Jesse, who's a big musky guy. Mm. And, uh, he bought a few things from Lee lures and then, um, one of them wasn't swimming right. And he contacted him and Lee himself, like called him like the same day and was like, here's what you got to do. And if that doesn't work, send it in. I'll send you a brand new one for free. And I just love Love that that sort of like human being, small company takes care of people. Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, makes awesome stuff and is a good dude. That's a great combo. Yep. Yep, he's absolutely a good dude. Um, I think I mentioned it the last time we talked, but he he's one of these guys that was I would see him on either Gillespie's show or mm-hmm. on Lin he's you know, he's friends. He could just call James Lindner. Like yeah, crazy. what? Yeah. That's crazy. Indeed. But yeah. All, all of a sudden he's this guy that I was watching on TV that I kind of looked up to and I still look up to him. And now I can just call him and like show up yeah. at his house and yeah. chill <laughs> for a half hour. That's and great. it's Heck just yeah. it's so crazy. So um but yeah, his his stuff is just amazing. The top water stuff is, it's really is good. crazy good. But a, a bucktail though will it allows you to cover water. Yep. So it's just cast retrieve, cast retrieve, cast retrieve. And I should mention too for anybody that hasn't musky fished, is you have to keep your bait in the water longer than you want to. <laughs> Because there's so many, That's I just see advice. so many like pike or bass fishermen. It's like they reel in the bait, pick it up out of the water. Yeah. Um, muskies, 50% plus of your hits are going to come boat side, and you have to do either a big circle yeah. or do a, a figure eight pattern next to the boat as big and wide as you can do it because these fish are, you know, 35, 40, 45, 50 inches. Yeah. So if you make a little tight turn, they have yeah, a hard they time can't getting turn back. Like that. Yeah. Oh, yep. I remember when I first, like we went fishing for one of the first times together and yeah. you, you threw a musky lure. Uh-huh. And then you showed me the figure eight. It was very sexy. Uh, so there's <laughs> a, there's like, another benefit of it, Brian. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, if you have a pretty lady with you and you figure eight, they find it attractive. I liked so, it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of specificity on that too. So I remember when we had uh, when we had Pete on the show, and we were kind of asking him like, do you, you know, when to when not to like chug your figure eight, like not just mm-hmm. straight, run it as wide as you. Because I don't think there's any debate that you want to go as wide as your arms will allow you on the figure eight or the oval. Yeah. But then you know, there's times you want to speed it up out of the corner, or times you want to chug it as you're doing it. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of specificity and different ways you can you can do it for sure. And, and a lot of that comes from experience reading how the fish is reacting fish, to your bait. Yeah. Like if, if, if I'm bringing in a bucktail and it's got its nose on it, I know that when I come to the boat, turn out to that first corner, I hang it right there because a hot fish is going to cut off that angle. And it's just, I don't know if it's oh, the predator sure. instinct, but it's going to, it's going to hit it right there. Yeah. And for me, that's the spot where I can set back into the fish the best. Oh, really smart. Um, yeah, good point. If, if it doesn't hit there, I'll do a couple ovals and again, read it, start chugging the bait maybe to get it fired up. Mm-hmm. If it backs off a little bit, maybe slow things down. Um, if, if the oval doesn't work the first two or three times around, I start doing the figure eight to get some, uh, some uh, movement changes in there. Mm-hmm. Sure. High in the water column, low in the water column. There've been times I've figure eighted with my reel practically in the water wow. just because those, those not only the, this two dimensional change, but the, add that third dimension with the depth uh, can get them going. Uh, it's smart. so much to think about, and it's yeah. 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> All right, yeah. So here's another, here's another like second guessing yourself question. How long do you mm -hmm. figure eight for? And I know that can vary per fish because sometimes they'll, sometimes they'll just sit there and look at it like a freaking submarine. They'll just sit there and yep. he's still there. You're like, I'm not even going to cast it. I'm just going to yeah, do a figure well, yeah, eight. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. It's like, I, I mean, I've, I've had, you know, that's why a lot of people do like quick set rigs and stuff. They'll come in on the bait and then they'll see the, the sucker mm -hmm. or whatever. But, you know, you can't always fish those. But um, sometimes they'll just hang out under the boat and then your next retrieve, they'll come under the boat and like come out from under the boat and see how long are you figure eighting for? I mean, I suppose that depends on the, the attitude of the fish as well or. After I see the fish either kind of kick off, I'll, I'll usually give it three or four more times. Okay. And then it, at some point you just kind of have to cut bait and go back to casting. Uh, yeah. If the fish comes back, the clock starts over, you know, yeah. uh, as soon as it leaves again, I'll, I'll do another three or four just to see what I can do. I'm trying to think how many, like how many times around is the most I've ever seen somebody do it and actually get the fish. I want to say it's in the high teens. Holy moly. I mean, it just seemed like it was forever, but the fish just kind of kept going away and coming hanging. back yeah. and get, mm -hmm. it would get ramped up and it would kind of settle down. And finally it just, couldn't take it anymore and, and slam the bait. Gage, so. Yeah. Yeah. And the dude's arms are already worn out. Just from right. figuring. for real. Jeez. <laughs> Golly. Um, so uh, one other style of bait that I want to talk about that yeah. I've, I've just been doing really well on. It's an, it's an amazing springtime bait, but it, you okay. can fish it all year round, especially into the late fall is a, a glide bait. Oh, um, heck yeah. These, there's a gentleman in Indiana. Oh, that one's so cute. Uh, that one's really Rusty. cool. I like that. Yeah. Rusty's Custom Lures. He's okay. got this little little dangly blade Look at it goes on like the back. Shape. Yeah, it's a neat shape. So when, when, the, when the, the glide bait kind of stops and is just kind of slowly falling, mm -hmm. these little tiny blades will kind just sit there up. and flutter. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's a kill. So cool. It's yeah. so cool. What, say, uh, say that name again. I'm not familiar with that company. So uh, Rusty's Custom Lures. Rusty's Custom Lures. Check them out. Yeah, yep. that's a sweet yep. looking bait. That paint job yeah, is legit too. Jeez. This one's a, a fortune teller and this one's called a six sucker. Okay. Mm. Oh, that one so, looks really yeah. cool too. That's a, really neat shapes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool shapes. He's a cool dude. I When I go uh, out to Indiana and fish, I usually stay with him. And um, I met him actually at the Wisconsin Muskie Expo up in, up in Wausau, the guy that okay. runs it. Uh, yeah. Rich Reinert, he hooked me up with Rusty and said, man, you got to throw these. And I, I have a hard time because I am so not chained to chaos tackle. Uh, I, for people that don't know, my father-in-law owned it and I helped him run it. So I was like a very small owner. We sold it recently, uh, I guess two years ago about now. Um, but I still, I still work with the, the guys at chaos quite a bit. Sure. I try yeah. to throw those lures a lot. I mean, they, I know they work. Yep. But I also don't want to, in my YouTube videos, just beat people over the head with chaos tackle, chaos tackle, yeah, chaos tackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People get old. I mean, that gets old. And for me, like I said, these baits are so dope. Like, yeah, they're, they're so cool. I yeah, mean, it's, awesome. it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different with that little blade on the back. And that's what I try to do with, with Lee's stuff, too. There's a lot of stuff that Lee makes that chaos tackle makes. And I, I stick with the chaos tackle stuff. But for like the Boilermakers, chaos doesn't have anything like that. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I try to try to hook up with these sort of small boutique bait makers and, and get that. stuff that is like off the wall that chaos doesn't have and it might fill like this little niche and yeah. uh, get me a fish or two over the season. So, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and like you said, it's cool to support, you know, like, like Lee lures or mm -hmm. was it rusties what, like dudes who are making yep. stuff in their garage and their basement and they're whatever, you know, they're not some giant living stin or chaos or what, you know, they don't have a huge production yep. facility. Like they're putting their blood, sweat and tears in these things. And half the time they look, awesome so it's not like you're just supporting them to be nice like they're making a good product yeah and it's yep. fun to try yep. something new totally fun to try something new especially yeah. when you catch a fish so tell us about <laughs> yeah right so tell, so honestly like so you know obviously i know you know you fished with them uh, uh steve jonasy yeah um and uh when i've fished with steve we've tried all kinds of different lures and we usually end up bagging the most of our fish on um phantom glide baits okay and so yep. i love fishing glides tell us how do you how do you work a glide bait whether it's a phantom or the rusties or the whatever what, what's, what's your go-to vibe sure so my the rod that i use is actually a nine foot rod uh it's a chaos rod called a surgical strike it's medium heavy so it's a fairly soft rod i know a lot of guys have a problem with the, the long rods because they're so used to working the uh, the the right. bait straight down because you have to give it that pop 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 to get the bait to glide back and forth. 
I've gotten used to either working it off to the side so the the tip of the rod's not slapping in the water. All right. Or a lot of times I'll just point the rod almost straight at the bait or maybe tilt it down a little bit and I'll just I'll work the reel. I was just going to ask you that. In the bass fishing world, that's how you really get a glide bait to do its thing is real, yeah. not so much the rod anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Uh, almost uh, probably 90% of the time I'm just going pop, pop, yep. pop, pop back and forth yep. with the, or, or, you know, you, you get into that, like, it's like two thirds of a turn, two thirds of a, you know, once you get into that, that, um, rhythm, it, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing I found too, with that lighter rod and a longer rod, especially St. Croix used to make a rod called the jerk. It mm -hmm. was seven foot six and just like a telephone pole of a rod, but people <laughs> yeah. would use it because they, they, it didn't have much give to it and you could rip hell or not hellhounds, um, Suix and, yeah. uh, what's, what's the bait, a reef hog, that oh, yeah. sort of thing. But they would also use it to, to work their glide baits. So I had one of those and I was working hellhound glide baits on the Madison chain. And, and so the reason I mentioned glide baits earlier is because they are amazing at finding fish. Sometimes yep. your hookup ratio isn't the best, but just for flat out finding fish and knowing where they're hanging out, they're amazing. There's no better bait, I don't think, at, at yep. doing that. Yeah, I agree. But I thought what I think what was happening is that these fish would hit, and I would be on the hook set so hard and so quick that that hook never had a chance to like find a spot to grab and would just pull sure. out of the fish's mouth. Yeah. And with a and that was a fast action rod too. So not only is it is it heavy action wise but the the bend not of the rod like is not man. that much yeah the chaos so what i started doing is i started using the saint Croix lipstick which was the only moderate fast action rod they built for muskies that i know of and it was a little bit longer and it was built for lipped crankbaits because crankbaits huh. have a tendency to pull out so they want something a little bit softer i started using that for my glide baits and my okay. hookup ratio went up because I think Crazy. what happens is the fish hits it. Those hooks need to find a spot to grab as your, as your rod is loading up, it gives that hook a chance to start grabbing. And then once you finally hit the butt section, it drives it home. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that we have with the chaos rods is they're all moderate fast actions, huh. regardless of the power, medium, heavy, all the way up to triple X heavy. The action is all a, a moderate fast action. Huh. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They're, they work awesome for that. Um, but yeah, just work in the shallows or, or even open water. Once again, a lot of your muskies out in open water are going to be up in that probably top 10 or 15 feet. And for a muskie to go 10 or 15 feet is like two kicks of its tail. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Really not that far. You know, people are like, Oh, right. that's pretty deep. It's like, no mm, man, they, they, they see that. They yeah. see that stuff. If they want to yeah. eat it, they'll come up and eat it. Yeah. 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 They'll get it. Yeah. yeah, that's dope, dude. So let's recap real quick. So, mm -hmm. um, Medusa's, yep. bucktails, and then you know you showed the the boiler maker specifically something. And I think the cool thing about a boiler maker, uh, with it being like a it, you know the boiler maker, it's shaped like a regular bucktail, but it has that little section in the middle that wood that float that keeps it up. So the neat thing mm -hmm. is, um, if you're newish at musky fishing, um. Steve Jensen one time was telling me about throwing uh, red October tubes and getting them intentionally snagged in weeds so that when you rip it loose, that, that instinct of the muskie comes up just to pop it. And he said 99% of people can't do that all the day because they're all day long because they just get so frustrated. Like it's annoying. Even though you're trying to get it snagged so that you can rip it loose, it's just a lot of – if you're new at fishing, something like a boiler maker staying above stuff – reeling it in that's probably a probably a good starting point you know as far I as like have to try that yes as far as just not losing your mind and not being annoyed and frustrated and whatever and then yeah some glide bait stuff um so if you get to a lake or i mean you know you said looking for weed edges um inside weed edges what what else are you looking for structure wise um you know because obviously like you said about certain fish on figure eights different fish have different attitudes different lakes are going to hold fish differently but mm -hmm. what are some um, if there is such a thing as like a universal something that you're looking for, what would that look like for you? Inside and outside turns in the weed edges. Okay. Any humps that you yeah. can find. There's there's a lake uh, up north that we fish a lot, uh, Teal. 
that has a bunch of little humps that have yep. weeds on them that are, I mean, they're just musky magnets. The, the fish are around those all the time. And what do you if mean got, by humps? I know what you mean, but what do you like? I was going to yep. ask because I don't know what you yeah. mean. <laughs> not, it's not Hergie, oh, Fergie, Fergie and the Black Eyed Peas or anything. Um, but <laughs> uh-huh. but uh, uh-uh. <laughs> any, anywhere where it gets up to maybe like 10 feet or less and you've got some weed growth, you know, maybe coming up out of 20, 30 feet of water and you've right. got this little little hump that's maybe the size of a house or even maybe just the size of a room. But if there's some weeds up there, that fish will use it as ambush, especially if it's if it's close to some deeper water where maybe some of those pelagic fish that it's it's hunting are, are hanging out. Uh, another thing I was going to mention is any anywhere you've got a, a creek or a stream or a river coming in or leaving are, are all places that muskies like to hang out as well. So yeah. um, those, those would be sort of the three main things that if, if you just said, hey, you're going to go fish this lake and I've got a map, those are the things that I'm going to start looking for right away. Beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a really – I like this right now because this is very like if I'm um, – bill and i'm getting into musky fishing and i can literally write down this time of lure this type of lure this type of lure this am, type of structure am I bill you're not bill I, no you're i think i'm you're, bill you're, you're, you're okay okay <laughs> bill um but you could like you could honestly you could like take notes on this and have a starting point um mm-hmm. and how would you for me i would do it via my electronics how would you go about finding humps on lakes um yeah definitely electronics uh i've i've got the the map chip. I can't remember if it's right. Lake Master um, yeah, yeah. of all the Wisconsin lakes. So that helps out a lot. Uh, if you go, I mean, a lot of the local bait shops will have a paper map yeah. of the the lakes close by anyway. So you can take a look at that. I know they used to sell those uh, working at Gander Mountain. They always sold those like Wisconsin yeah, like musky. The fishing hot spots and stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah, fishing yeah. hot spots, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get, get your hands on one of those and just, just start looking for those main spots. And then when I'm out on a lake, um, and I do maybe find a hump or something like that, that I want to fish or a weed edge, excuse me, I'll take a half hour and just drive back and forth and maybe look for that weed edge and start dropping waypoints oh, along yeah. the way yeah. so that now I'm not, you know, do that, let the spot rest, come back. And now when you're fishing it, you're not right on top of it, like yeah. sort of stepping on it. You can stay off a little bit. Uh, and and maybe not spook any of the fish that are sort of uh, hanging out in that that area that you're trying to fish. Yeah, you're a little more prepared that way. Yeah, a little more mm-hmm. specific. Yeah, you're going into battle, ready to rock. Yeah. Um, and yep. one thing too, one one small tip I would give is if you don't have like great electronics on your boat, absolutely a paper map. They worked forever. They still work mm-hmm. now. There's nothing wrong with a paper map. Um, or you can easily go online, print stuff off as far as like contour lines. Um, and then the other thing is most people, like 99% of people have a smartphone now. So there's like um, Navionics apps on your phone yeah. you can use. So like if you don't have a big expensive fish finder, you can still nav. Because like, um, so we got a guy coming on soon on our podcast named Rico from uh, um, Life Below Zero, the the TV show, and mm-hmm. you know they're up in Alaska and they're running these rivers wide open and just falls out like with these old boats with no electronics and whatever. And one episode, there was another guy on that show named uh, Chip, right? Isn't that who it was? Him and his brother just bought a new boat and they're wide open on this river. And before, like while this is happening, he looks at me and he goes. What are they doing? Like, how do they do this without electronics? What if they hit? How do they know where say? they're going? Like, like what if, what, what like if it comes up? Or and like then whatever. four seconds later, he ran into a rock. Like, oh, F word. Yeah. Like, gunk, 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 <laughs> just choose up his prop. And I'm like, dude, so, you know, if you don't have like an expensive mapping system on your boat, um, number one, that doesn't make you a less than fisherman on any level. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you know, you get out and fish what you got, man. If you got a f- eight foot flat bottom, dope. Go get some fish. If you have mm-hmm. a, you know, a, hundred thousand dollar ranger deep what cool whatever um but if you have a phone you can have a safe way of navigating a lake seeing depth changes navionics there's a lake right by us um lake eau claire not the eau claire chain but lake eau claire in augusta uh it's a pretty wide lake and if you're not on like if you're going i guess you'd be heading east on the lake if you're not in this one channel the whole like seven eighths to the west of the lake is like a foot deep and if you didn't know that, I promise you that's chewing up some people's props. Um, and, you know, Navionics app or there's other like boating apps you can and get. there's so, me. I'm like, I would just put it in the water and go. And yeah. And then you'd chew your prop it. up. You'd be like that chip guy on the, your bill and your chip. Um, that's ironic. The dude's name is Chip and he messed up his prop. 
I just put that together. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're cute. Well, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, we'll, just a couple more questions, dude, and we'll let you yeah, go. I super appreciate absolutely. your time. Like truly, truly. Yeah. Um, one thing that I always really liked about Pete Mayna as a kid, he was my, you know, he's my absolute idol, mm-hmm. my hero. Uh, right. Yeah, there's a picture of me with I was going to say, Mayna I thought right I saw him in the back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, He's back there. <laughs> uh, with his beautiful long hair. Um, and then when we had him on the podcast, he's about the chillest dude he's so funny. ever. Like, he's just such awesome. a normal human being. Um, but one thing I always really respected about him, and I feel like he was ahead of the game on this, is like fish – um, conservation, preservation, as far as like really taking care of the fish if you do get one. Mm-hmm. Because like you said, um, warmer water or even just water, water in general, like that back in the day um, when I would go to Hayward, that was like a technique dudes would do to kill muskies as they would fight them until they were exhausted and died. Yeah. That was a thing. Like, um, and that's not a diss to like Cal Johnson and Louis Spray and all these old guys. That's just how they did it back then. Right. Um, but that's the opposite of what I want to do. I don't want to get mm-hmm. a fish on my line and then be like oh f what do i do now i don't have the right net i don't have the right like wire cutters i don't have the right pliers what kind of things do you say brian um you got to be ready with equipment wise to take care of these fish sure uh first and for- foremost is probably a big net um i mean and i'm talking like mm-hmm. like a big the, one yeah. the big frable right power catch nets yeah. um chaos makes nets don't they or they did that they're selling the clam nets. Oh, yep. okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Um, but you want to have a, a net that's big and deep enough so that when you do get the fish in there, you can leave it over side of the boat. Cause I see it so many times where people get a muskie and they'll boom. Oh, I know. Oh, I hate oh. that. Yeah. It's gosh. Just, my soul dies. A little I know. Bit Same. It's hard to watch, but I've, I've got like, I've got a little U bolt on the front of my console in my boat that when we net a fish, I can slide the handle. Oh, into that, sure. That's smart. And, and the, the rest of the net hangs over the other side of the boat. And so they've got things called net buddies now that you put a little, a little thing on the yoke and it slides into this thing on your gunnel and it holds the net right there over side of the boat. Yeah, that's really So smart. you can work on the fish. It, it's, it's, so that's, that's first and foremost is keeping that fish upright in the net. And now that gives you time and it keeps you safe. Cause even when I get small fish, I'll still net them, even though, I mean, there's people who would say, Oh, you shouldn't do that. But I, I like to have it enclosed in that net because if they go wild and you get a hook in the hand, yeah, I want that fish to be corralled a little bit. So uh, a couple of needle nose pliers, I usually have like a short one and a, a long handled one because mm-hmm. then that way, if you've, if you've got a buddy and you've got to kind of work in there to get at it, it makes the things a lot easier. Uh, a, a, I don't use them that often, but a, a big long jaw spreader just uh-huh. to yep. open up the mouth so you can get in there. And then one thing that a lot of musky guys have that people might not know about. It's a, a bolt cutter called a Nipex. Nipex, and they, okay. Yep, they run about 50 bucks. It's K-N-I-P-E-X. I believe it's a German company. Okay. But a set of Nipex, I mean, it will cut through a six or seven out hook like n- nobody's business. I mean, okay. you can get in there, snip, snip, snip. Make sure you remove the pieces of hook out of the fish. And then, I mean... Hooks, hooks are cheap. It's a lot cheaper than trying to trying to get uh, trying to kill a muskie. So, uh, yeah. you know, if if there's any for for most musky fishermen, if there's any question of man, this is going to be tough to pop out of there, we'll just jump in there, snip, 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 get the bait out. Do a little that surgery. Way you can, yep, yep. Do a little surgery. Get the fish unhooked. Let it chill. If you want to measure it, the best way to do it is a bump board. Musky yep. bumper makes one. Uh, get it nice and wet so that when you lay the fish on there, if you put it on there dry and if it's hot, you've got this chance of that slime that protects the fish coming off onto the bump board. Mm -hmm. If you dip the bump board, get it cooled off, get a nice layer of water on there, drop it on there, get a quick measurement, you know, have the guy with the camera ready so that ready to go. Yeah. 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 You don't want that fish out of the water any more than 30 seconds. So grab it, pick it up, for me, we're filming it. I, I usually just pull stills off the video so we're not... Oh, smart. like a frame. Around. Yeah, yeah, smart. Yep, yep, yep. Measure it if I want to and then get her back in the water. And uh, yeah, that's that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, you know, and I know there's there is some controversy about, about bump boards, but I think they are, if you are going to measure a fish, 
it is the best way because the way that we used to measure them is you'd hold it vertical, which is yeah, which is not good for them. Not good for them, especially a bigger yep. fish. And you, you'd yep. like get the tail to touch the bottom, and you'd have this pole that you'd kind of eyeball where the the nose was, and it would probably take you 15 seconds to get a measurement. Right, like, that's not good for the fish. Yeah, or guys, it's not would super just, specific. Yep, guys would just throw it on the on the carpet. Now you're removing that slime layer and you're making yep. a mess of your boat right. uh, and, yeah. and use a, a tape measure. So, uh, you know, I, I actually am working with Musky Zinc and, and that's the, the kind of the club that you can belong to there. That's a national um, organization, but there are smaller satellite the chapters all like, over. Yeah. Like I, be, I belong to the Cap City Musky Zinc uh, out of Madison um, there's, there's so many different chapters, but I, I wanted to work with them because they've got this thing called the lunge log and it's a place where muskies Inc. members can go in and log their fish. Um, size being one of the parameters, but date, time, uh, weather, uh, casting, trolling, did you get a girth on it? Mm. So it's a, it's a cool way. I mean, it's, it's a way that they can keep track of, you know, because a lot of the little satellite chapters will have uh, a competition throughout the year, like who's got the most inches or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a way for you to keep track of that. But more importantly, it's a way for, say you've got uh, maybe Jordan Weeks, who's the the Wisconsin musky biologist for the DNR. He wants to see, you know, what are growth rates like in the northwest part of the state? He can go in the lunge log and pull that data and start seeing like what what are guys registering are the fish tending to be bigger are they smaller uh i mean you can do it right down to a specific lake or region or a state so it's it's really cool and and i just you know i wanted to work with them because you know for one i my my real job is as a chemist biologist so like i'm obsessed with like measuring things yeah that's cool (laughs) so cool uh, yeah you know there's there's so many guys like oh you you know, you shouldn't measure that 37 inch. It's like, man, I busted my butt. I'm going to, I'm going to be as careful as I can with it. I'm going to take care of it the best I can. You know, our relationship with a muskie starts with us slamming a, a hook into its face. Right. So, you know, and, and I've, I've talked to Jordan, the, the biologist about this. He said, yeah, man, I measure my fish too. Like if, yeah. if you want to know what it is so that when you get back and you'd be like, well, it's a, might've been a 36. Like if you want to know, great. Yeah. If you don't, then just water release it. That's fine. Yeah. Cause so here's I'm a little soapbox, but <laughs> All right, let's I have, do it. I have yeah. so so many guys that are like, oh, I don't measure it unless it's 40. Okay. Well, how do you how know do it's you 40 know? unless you, you know? measure it? Yeah. <laughs> so the, so here, here's where it gets yeah. really good. Well, I don't measure it unless it's 44. Oh, are you better than the 40 inch guy? Well, I don't I don't do it unless it's 47. Oh, <laughs> you're 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 so it's like it's like this stupid contest. Yeah, it's it's yeah, uh, um I can't write it. there's like a term for it. It's uh it's it's musky fishing virtue signaling. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm, exactly I'm right. better than you because I wouldn't do that. It's yeah. Like, Man, get out of here. Yeah. Get, get out of here. We're just trying to fish and have fun and no doubt. and take care of the fish as best we can and, but still do with it what we want to do because we put the time in to catch that fish. Yeah. So that's why I'm I'm trying to be as big a proponent as you know I can for the the safe the safest way to measure them if you want to yeah. if you don't don't worry about it um, you know so there that's my thing no yeah, that's great <laughs> like that it. was really good and I, one thing I've noticed in your videos I remember seeing some videos that like Pete did some videos that Steve did um, who mm-hmm. else. Um, Joe Buker over the years when they'd have the fish in that giant net on the side of the boat, they like look back at homeboy in the back of the boat and they'd be like, you ready? Pull it up picture, get it back. You know, they, they, yep. they would like ask, like, are you ready? Because this, yep. once it comes out of the water, the, the clock is ticking. Um, especially yep. man, um, I will say too, um, that I know this for a fact from my own experience and I've, I've had people say, it, especially in whether it's just south of 80 or whatever, but especially in warmer water, I want to get that fish out of the water for just the smallest amount of time. And then, um, because one thing too, that really sucks, and this is a pretty big deal in the bass fishing world as well, uh, is a 
terrible two word combo called delayed mortality. Um, so yeah. sometimes the fish will swim away. And so you're like, yay. And what you don't realize is that it's all messed up on the inside and might go belly up an hour later, mm-hmm. two hours later, whatever. And so, yeah, anything you can do to take care of them. Cause if it is, as they say, um, and I don't think it has to be, but it can be the fish of 10,000 casts. Mm-hmm get one i mean come on man take care of that thing you know like that's not the time to like try and figure out how to net it that's not the time to figure out how quick to get it in and out you know like um it's again using like a deer hunting metaphor you know you get a giant buck that walks in front of you that's not the time to figure out how to pull your bow back you should have been shooting and ready and target and all that stuff and um, one thing that pete does that i think is really neat is he has a couple uh, musky mounts like like replica mounts and he'll show people how to hold a musky on that replica mount like where to put your hands how where to support it whatever um so when the time comes you're like ready to rip and so yeah yep there's, I don't know. There's all kinds of ways. They're just such cool fish. And when you look at them, I mean, there's been so many times where I've caught fish, especially, I don't know why I, I see it this way, uh, but like bulldogs, like in the fall, um, where I get them in the net and, you know, I get the hook out and they're just sitting there chilling like a submarine and their, their fins are just kind of moving. And I'm just looking at this thing in the net, like, dude, this is the coolest thing I've ever looked at. You know, like this is just such an awesome, like, look at the width of that thing. Look at its eyes. Look at how wide its back is. Look at those markings. Um, Sometimes they'll have like a weird shape to their jaw or, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm in love with these things. Like they're so cool. And like, I don't want to hurt them. I don't want to do anything to to jeopardize their health. Uh, They're too important. They're too, they're too big of a deal. So, um, Loli, you got any more questions for Brian? No, I just want to go fishing. Go musky fishing. Yeah, I yeah. want to do it. We yeah. haven't targeted them before. No, yeah, it's been it's been a really long time since I've gone out. Specific. Oh, so last time since you were on Brian, she did catch a few muskies. Um not on purpose, but she caught them on awesome. a jack hammer. It was during um, a tournament, during a, bass a bass tournament. tournament. Yeah, she caught 3 during a bass tournament. And it was dope too. It was like um it was like the three little bears like they went like smaller to like a like a 20 something to like a mid thirties something like oh, nice. just like right back to back on a jackhammer. He's like, um, you've got another musky. Yeah, I'm like, oh. It was super cool, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we got to get after him. So, uh, Brian, we appreciate your time, man, very much. You're, you're yeah, a good absolutely. dude. Anybody, anybody watching this, listening to this, please tune in this guy. Um, check out his YouTube channel. He's consistently, consistently uh, putting out videos of super high production quality yep. um, and uh, knows his stuff. So thank you, brother. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you for having me on again, guys. I, so now that I'm, I've been on multiple times, I'm officially yeah. friend of the show. So uh, absolutely, uh, you yes. know, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely are. We appreciate the crap out of you, dude. And we honestly, it's such a thing. Like, like we had uh, Jonathan Jones on this dude, who's a absolute stud bass fisherman from Florida, a few weeks ago, and he was like, "Man, y'all got to come down here and fish with fish with me, whatever." And like. We want to. We totally. That want. would be so fun. Wait, where are you? But at like, again? you're in Wisconsin. Like, we yeah, have to fish muskies far. at some point. Um, Southern Wisconsin, Chainsville. So, yeah. oh my gosh, not too far away. And we drive by there semi regularly because my dad lives oh. in uh, South Beloit. So, like, Hello. oh, right on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bring the boat down or jump in your boat. Or we, 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 we like honestly, not just talk. Like, we got to fish together this. at some point. Yeah, that'd be fun. I would love That'd be to. Really fun. Oh, I would love, yeah. honestly, what I think would be the coolest is to have you and Lola fish and I'll film because I really want to see Lola get in like a big boy, like a, like a good muskie and just have her I like probably freak wouldn't out. be very quiet about it. No, it would be awesome. It'd be really <laughs> funny. Yeah, it'd be dope. Like, I'm sweating. I'm going to pee. Yeah, you'd, you know, be like a lot a, of you'd be like apologizing to the fish <laughs> or like so saying well, sorry so to the, yeah, yeah. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be anarchy. It'd be angling anarchy. It would be. It'd be, so. it'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, brother. We appreciate it. We'll see you later. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.